In this video, we'll be making our inventory system and we'll combine it along the way with the UI from the last video. So at the end, you should hopefully have a fully working item and inventory system that looks something like this. So let's get started. So the next step is updating our inventory as we go. To do that, let's go to our canvas and let's create a new component called the inventory UI. For this component, we won't be using anything under collections, but we'll keep the start and update. And the first thing that we want here is a reference to our inventory. Because we set up a singleton in the last video, we can get that by simply going inventory.instance. But to make sure our code runs at optimal speed, let's go ahead and cache this. Let's create an inventory component called inventory. And then in the start method, let's set inventory equal to inventory.instance. Then what we can do is create a method. We'll call this update UI. In here, we'll have all the code for updating the items in our inventory. For now, let's just throw a debug.log statement saying updating UI. But of course, we want to call this method somewhere. Luckily, in the last video, we set up a nice way to do this as well. We set up a callback method. So if we go inventory dot on item changed callback, we can then subscribe to this event. To do that, we use plus equals and we write the name of the function, which is update UI. Remember inside of our inventory script, we're triggering this event whenever a new item has been added or removed. And we've now said that we want the update UI method to be called whenever that happens. So just by saving this code, going into Unity and hitting play, we should be able to right click an item. It then says picking up helmet of protection and then updating UI. So our function is correctly being called. What we then need to do is loop through all of our inventory slots and tell each one what items are stored, if any. To make this easier, let's go ahead and create a script on our inventory slot, which we'll just call inventory slot. And this will keep track of everything happening on a particular slot. This will update the UI on the slot and have functions that define what happens when we press it or press remove. So let's open this up. Again, we can delete everything under collections and both the methods. Instead, we want to create a variable of type item Item, this variable is going to keep track of the current item in the slot. We then create a method for adding an item to the slot. We'll go public void add item. And this is going to take in an item which we'll call the new item. And we'll simply set item equal to the new item. But we also want to update our icon. To do that, we need a reference to the image component on our icon object. And whenever we deal with UI in scripting, we want to be using Unity Engine dot UI. Now we can create a public image, which is going to be a reference to the icon. Then in our add item method, we go icon.sprite equals the item.icon and icon.enabled is going to be true. We'll also have a method for clearing out a slot. So public void clear slot. And here we'll simply set item equal to null icon.sprite equal to null and icon.enabled equal to false. Let's then save that, go into Unity. Now we have an icon slot. Let's drag in the icon for this slot. Let's hit apply to apply this to all of the other inventory slots. And now we simply need to loop through all of the inventory slot components. And for each one, call add item if there's an item to add. If not, we want to call clear slot. So let's jump into our inventory UI script. And here when updating the UI, we want to find all of the inventory slots. And as we can see in our hierarchy, all of our inventory slots are children of the item Items parent object. So if we get a reference to this, we can simply find all of the components in the children. So let's reference this in the script. Let's create a public transform called items parent. Let's then also create an array of inventory slots. So let's create inventory slot array, which we're going to call slots. And inside of our start method, we can set slots equal to items parent dot get components in children. And here you want to make sure you find the plural version. So there's an S here, because we want to find all of the components. And the components we're looking for are the inventory slot components. Now you could do this every time inside of the update UI method. That's of course less performant, but if your slots are changing, you might be forced to do that. But since our inventory slots are completely static, we'll simply do this once. Then in the update UI method, we'll loop through all of the slots. So we'll create a for loop, which we'll want to continue as long as i is less than slots.length. And so we're looping through all of our slots. And for each iteration, we want to check if there are more items to add. So if i is less than inventory.items.count, 
well then there are more items to add so we'll take our ith slot called add item on that slot and pass in the corresponding item in our inventory items array then if we don't have any more items so we are out of items to add well then we simply want to call clear slot on that slot now if we save this go into unity and find our canvas we'll need to drag in our items parent let's drag that in and if we now hit play our script should be working so if we right click on one of these objects you can see it says interacting with test item we are picking it up and it's showing it in our inventory but we haven't given it an icon yet so it's not looking very good also on our third item it says not enough room that's because we need to go into our game manager and set the amount of spaces to 20 if you haven't done that already then we can find our items here and the three items in the scene here are all the same item which is the helmet of protection and for this we'll just drag in placeholder one let's actually rename this to helmet let's duplicate it let's rename this one to shield and we'll just set the name here to placeholder shield and here we'll drag in the second placeholder and then we can take say the third item here and drag in our shield to use that instead so now when we hit play we should be able to pick up first helmet of protection then another helmet of protection and then third our shield now we can click on these but not much will happen and the remove buttons aren't showing either to get our remove buttons to show inside of our inventory slot we'll add another reference this one is going to be to the button we'll call it remove button and when we we add an item we want to set remove button dot interactable to true and when we then clear it we want to set remove button dot interactable back to false but of course we also want something to happen when we press the remove button to do that let's create a public method that we will call whenever the button's pressed let's create a public void and we'll call this on remove button and here we simply want to go ahead and call inventory dot instance dot remove then we want to pass in our item if we say that go into unity find an inventory slot here we now need to drag in our remove button so let's drag that in and we'll also need to select our remove button down here we'll add an on click event and we'll point this to our inventory slot go under the inventory slot script and make sure to call on remove button whenever it's pressed we can then apply this prefab hit play and now when we pick up an object we can see the remove button appearing when we press it we remove it from our inventory now currently the object just disappears into nothing this is actually something a lot of rpgs do including games such as world of warcraft you might want to put some kind of prompt on the screen or you could have the character actually drop it on the ground that's all up to you what we want to add is a way to use the item so inside of our inventory slot let's create another public void let's call it use item here we want to check if we actually have an item so if item is not equal to null and if we do we want to go item dot and then we want to have some kind of use function on that item to create this let's go inside of our item script remember we created this in the last video here we want to create a public and we'll actually make this a virtual void called use here we'll use the item and something might happen but no matter what, we're going to throw out a debug.log statement saying something like using and then the name of the item. Now, the reason why we aren't just implementing some functionality here is that for different items, we want different things to happen when we try and use them. Some items might sit in your inventory only to be used as currency or for crafting. Others might have a direct effect like a potion and some might be equipped onto the character. So by marking this as virtual, we can simply derive different objects from the item and then define for each one what we want to happen when it's used. But we'll make sure to call this method for all of them inside of our inventory slot. So now we'll select our item button and add an on click event here as well, which is going to link to our inventory slot. We'll go to the inventory slot script and here call use item. Again, let's make sure to hit apply. And when we now click on an item in the game, it's going to say using and then the name of the item. We also want to be able to bring up and hide our inventory when needed. We we'll go into our inventory UI script. Here we'll create a reference to our entire UI. We'll write public game object inventory UI then in our update method we want to check if input.get button down and here we want to define some kind of button for the inventory and if we press this button we want to toggle our ui so we'll go inventory ui dot set active and we want to set it to its reverse state so we'll check whether or not it's currently active by going inventory ui dot active self 
and we'll then take the inverse of that. Let's close that off. Let's save it. And now in Unity, we want to go edit, project settings, input. And here we want to add another element to our list of inputs. Let's expand this to 19. And this is not going to be cancel. Instead, we want this to be inventory as our positive button will do I and as our alternative button will do B. So I for inventory and B for bag. We then select our canvas and drag our entire inventory object into the inventory UI slot. Now when playing, we can use I and B to bring up our inventory, but we can still move when clicking on our inventory. To fix this, we'll go into scripts, open up the player controller. At the top here, we want to be using Unity Engine dot event systems. Then inside of our update, we want to check if event system dot current dot is pointer over game object. And this is a function. So make sure to put in the parentheses. And if it is, we want to return. So here we're simply accessing our current event system to check whether or not we're currently hovering over UI. And if we are, well then we want to exit out before we control our player. Let's save that, go into Unity, let's disable our inventory by default here and hit play. Now we should be able to pick up some items, bring up our inventory, pick up some more, click around on these to use them and delete them and our character will remain stationary. Finally, let's just organize this by creating a folder under our scripts. We'll call this items. Here we'll place our item and item pickup. We'll also create another one. This one we'll call inventory. Here we'll place all of our inventory scripts. Finally let's create a folder called prefabs and let's just drag our inventory slot into there. Phew, that's probably the most complex system we've ever covered in these tutorials. Great job for hacking your way through that. That's pretty much it for this video. In the next one, we'll have a look at equipment. That's something I'm really looking forward to. Until then, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thanks to all of the awesome Patreon supporters who donated in July and a special thanks to Hans Hoftun, Derek Heemskirk, Faisal Marify, Jesper Mikkelsen, Stone Gamer, Thomas Voli, Cyborg Mummy, Cole Cabral, Jason Latito, Aaron, Robert Bund and Judaman. If you want to become a patron yourself, you can do so at patreon.com slash You guys rock.